It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Cardinals and the Commanders. All that and more coming up next. This building holds just north of 80,000, and they have come out in very good numbers today at FedEx Field in Landover, Maryland. Today, we've got a solid matchup in store in the NFC as it'll be the Arizona Cardinals taking on the Washington Commanders. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. A CD, these commanders, a last place ball club in 2022. In most cases, you'd say that was a lost season, but they finished 8-8-1, eight, eight, 500. That would have won the NFC South. What kind of a chance do you give them in what is certainly a loaded NFC East? And you're exactly right about the division, so you have to be cautious about what you think with this team. They've got to continue to play excellent defense and get some improvement on the offensive side of the ball and establish who their quarterback is going to be. And for the visiting Cardinals, you know, this is a team in flux a little bit. J.J. Watt retired. There's a new coaching staff in place. They've got some work to do to turn around what was a 4-13 campaign in 2022. I remember this franchise won 11 games in 2021, but everything's new now head coach, the way they're going to run things on offense, style of play on defense, but sometimes that change can be really good. Now the big leg of Matt Prater ready to get this one started, and we are underway from FedEx Field. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone, and the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. The commander's set to go to work on offense, and they've handed the controls to this man in his second NFL season, former Tar Heel Sam Howell. Howell got the nod from commander's leadership to be the team's starter this year. A nice bump for last year's fifth-round pick. One start as a rookie and didn't look bad at all winning the team's finale. And let's not forget, this is a guy who was once viewed as a first-round pick, so there's plenty of promise hidden beneath the surface. To throw right away is Howell. And the pressure will bring him down here. The Cardinals get home for the sack. Kaiser White, the former safety, gets the sack. Okay, partner, a couple points of interest right here, all right? Offensively, we see that they came out throwing the football, but maybe more importantly, the blitz that came defensively, they got right after him. And you were telling me pregame before we came on air, you think this is something we could see a lot. Yeah, there's no doubt about it because this is a unit that wants to play the game on their terms. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. And that might have been a situation where even though you don't hit on the deep throw, you at least put in the defender's minds early in the game that we're going to press the ball deep against your secondary. And that can have a ripple effect on how they function throughout. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. They'll set up the screen for Gibson. And he'll take this across the 25 before going out of bounds. It'll be a pickup of 13, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. And that's a play that's not uncommon on third and long because the offense is just hoping that somehow they can get a guy in space and follow some blockers downfield. Does a pretty nice job there getting a few yards, but he ends up getting stopped before he can get the first down. And now the putter, Tress Way, as he sends this one away. Returning it is Moore. It'll go as a 42, make it a 43-yard punt. Six on the return. And the Cards will take over first and 10. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. They'll be led out by a guy who's moved around a bit in his career already. Out of the University of Texas, it's Colt McCoy. This is a guy who has studied and learned the game since birth. The son of a coach, grew up in the game, understands how to motivate and how to maneuver the football downfield when given an opportunity under center. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Here's McCoy. And this will be swung out here for counter. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And it'll be second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense.
A uh, short sure one here caught by McBride. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. If you're these receivers, you got to be ready because when he's going to throw it quick on that RPO, he's going to throw it quick. And this is why you spend time with your guy either in the offseason, during the week, the whole bundle. Because sometimes it's just telepathy. You both see the same thing, and he knows get the ball to him right away. Now McCoy. He's got his target. That's Zach Pascal. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. But injury stoppage here, and that's Marquise Brown, who appears to be shaken up. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. From Commander's territory now, it's first and 10, down at the 31. They'll run for the first time with James Conner. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. Holding offense. So that time, they got the left guard with a hold. And let's face it, in today's ball, you might have that 330-pound guy you're supposed to clear out of there. You might need a little extra help by grabbing the jersey and trying to ride him out. Connor up the middle, and he will force his way forward for a yard or two, but I have a good feeling this will be coming back. Yeah, so they get that one, Charles, on the right tackle. The yeah, oftentimes in that spot, you're trying to work against a defender, trying to set the edge in the running game, and you're trying to drive around and get your body twisted so that he can't get there. Sometimes your hands get too involved. To Connor on the check down. Well, he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. It's a big play, yet amazingly, because of how far they had to go. They're still looking at a second down here. Well, we know he can run the football, too, but he's a good pass catcher, and that's been on display here, Charles, on this opening drive. And we certainly have seen the benefits of what he did in the offseason, which was spend more time with wide receivers, working on routes, working on cuts, in order to make himself a more complete running back and even more of a threat downfield. Throwing again second down but this time it's incomplete that is first incompletion after a four for four start yeah but they shouldn't back off from what they're doing i like the play calling right out of the gate i like the tone that they're setting keep going in that direction they'll look to throw again and this is going to be incomplete the commander's defense holds, and that will bring up fourth down. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. And the 39-year-old veteran puts it right through, and the Cardinals have the first points. It's 3-0. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks, you tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal, you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. Crater now will send it away following the made field goal. Taking it about the one. And he returns this to the 22. The commander's going to retake the field for drive number two. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out of a little extra emotion. 
So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves that way. You get a second opportunity, nothing big happened, but then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. It's a six yard gain on the ground and that'll make it second and four. A quick burst there and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. Ball on the 28 yard line, here's second and four. Here's Hal to throw on second down. That one caught by Gibson. And he'll be tackled right on the chart for the 45. They get 17 there, good for a commander's first down. So the completion there, I mean, Charles, looking at this defense, certainly in for a tough task here this afternoon. What are some of the keys for them if they want to come out on top? Well, the first thing, partner, is they just allowed a completion there. They don't want to get a string of those going. Let him get his confidence. Let him get into the rhythm of the game, the flow of the game, and all of a sudden, he's feeling like he can do no wrong. You want to really get after his timing a little bit, knock a few balls away, and make things uncomfortable for him. Because if he feels relaxed, you are in for a tough afternoon. Two yards to go, second down. Once more, Gibson. Oh, it bowls over it. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. It's a first down for Washington on a pickup of 11. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now how? Short throw to the tight end, Thomas. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. They've been able to use the size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Counting down toward the midway point in quarter one. On second down, a run with Gibson. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. The first drive this unit had, they punted. This drive, much more polished. Just looking crisper, aren't they? Moving the ball. Maybe the first drive was a little bit of a wake-up call. Probably a little bit angry that they had to punt the ball away the first time they had it. Got motivated, got to the sideline, said, okay, let's not let that happen here as we take over again. Now Hal, short throw there, caught by Thomas. Calling the gain of three on the play, and that'll make it second down. Quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger gain. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. And he takes it down to the 10 yard line. First catch for the Washington leader in receiving yards a year ago. Good for a first down. And Howe will throw it. And oh, it'll be intercepted. And the Cardinals are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. CD, when he went to throw that, I'm not sure if he just didn't see where the defense was. Whatever the case, not the throw you're looking for on first and goal. Not at all because, look, let's face it, that close to the goal line, if you throw an interception, it's going to hurt on any down. But really the only down you can kind of live with is if you do it on fourth down. The first three, if you don't have it wide open, just get rid of it. Make sure they can't get it and live to fight another down. First and goal, and you throw the pick, not good at all. Do your thing. On first down, McCoy. Wilson's got it complete. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. A three-yard pickup brings up second and seven at the 23-yard line. 
Now second and seven from the 23. Now the veteran workhorse. Here's James Conner. And Connor going to pick up a Cardinals first down as he'll get this up to the 32. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Again, it's Connor. Takes it to about the 37. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. From the 37, they work on second and six. Back to throw. McCoy. They're unable to connect, but a late flag comes in. And the contact may have come too early. So they saw the contact before the ball arrived. Penalty flag for pass interference. And trying to avoid pass interference is so difficult. You're trying to slow down these skilled receivers. And somehow, some way, they make plays on the football. And sometimes you're there too soon. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Zach Pascoe, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. to throw again. McCoy. He'll dump this one off to Connor. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. And the Washington pressure gets to him. He will go down. It'll be a loss of eight on the sack, and it's going to lead him to fourth down. And when you go five wide like they just did there, you can't really max protect, can you? No, you cannot. What you're hoping is that by going five wide, you're forcing the defense into coverage. And if you do that, you get a chance to find some people downfield. But if they audible themselves and go into a blitz, then it's got to happen right now. Or very lights quickly. out. <laughs> or exactly right. Turn them out. That play's over. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And he'll get credit for putting him inside the 20 as the fair catch is made right at about the 19-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Commanders will take over with a first and 10. First and 10 here for Hal and the Commanders at the 20. Here's Gibson to start the drive. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. They suspected that it was a power play up the middle coming at him, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. From the 23, here's the second and eight. Al now to throw it. Try to lob it in there, but it's incomplete. And it's more play there. He's probably saying, I wish I would have done that on the last drive instead of throwing the interception. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Al throwing on third down here. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. They'll wind up getting seven on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. Now that's going to be a tough one to explain when they get together to watch the game film, isn't it? I mean, they had the right call, had the out route. He's got to know where the first down sticks are. Yet he steps out of bounds that close. Not their best play. 
Here's more on the return. It's a 39-yard punt, eight on the return, and out will come the offense as they take over. Ready to go with their next drive, and at the line, the Cardinal offense. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Cardinal football here to start quarter number two as they are looking at a second and five situation. Looking to throw, McCoy. And incomplete. You know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Off play action, McCoy. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Normally on third down and short yardage, you're thinking to throw to your tight end. It's just going to be a simple chain mover. But this time they let him roam down the field, and a nice dart picks up the first down, and then some. On first and ten is counter. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. From the 41, here's a second down and six. Back to throw. McCoy throwing quickly to Wilson. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at Washington's 29-yard line. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Off the play fake, McCoy. Zach Ertz has it complete. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. Good work there. You're going to see on play action, they run an out route with the receiver on the outside and let the tight end work the seam in the area beyond him. A great concept, and it leads to a first down. A give running right is counter, and he is going to lose yardage here. But he lost six there on the first down play. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. So a nightmare start to the drive as they're already staring at second and long. They'll stay on the ground with Connor again. And boy, this burgundy and gold defense charged up now. They stop him behind the line again. They lose two on that last play, so things get even tougher. Third and long coming up. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Throwing on third and long. McCoy. And that is incomplete. Strong coverage by Washington. And now fourth down. Another good drive, Charles, but it looks like another that might end in a field goal try. They've made some nice plays. They've given themselves opportunities, but as you noted, another field goal attempt coming up. And that's not how they want to end drives. They've got to figure out what's the final touch that they need to push it across the goal line. Yeah, still yet to find the end zone. 
Well, in a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner? Because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. Prater now will send it away following the main field goal. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Washington offense back out there. They are still in search of their first points in the ball game, but only down 6 0 as they begin with a first down. start on the ground with Gibson and he'll go down at the 26 following a gain of six if you're in the offensive huddle you're smiling after that play because you've certainly got them guessing now second and short could they just hand it off for another big gain or did they take advantage of this spot to take a big shot downfield from the 26 they'll line up on second and four out of the gun it's Howell Forced out to his left. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. He'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three. But now it's third down. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit. And he gets a small gain on the play. Well, the play fake. And now here's how to throw it. He's got his target. That's complete. Big yardage that time for Washington. And even 50 yards. And the offense is saying to itself right now, early they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a burnt down on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Powell. Going right back to Dodson. And he doesn't quite make it. Taking it with it, an eyelash. Dropped at the one. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, you just need the tip of the ball across the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. Gibson is into the end zone. Touchdown, Washington. So part of it was a passing game that drove them down the field, but when they get close, they trust that man in the backfield, and he took them home. And they trust their offensive line as well because so many of these units, they specialize in either pass protection or run blocking. This group shows his versatility and gets both Joey done on this drive. Joey Sly on for the extra point. He's got it, and they take the lead at 7-6. Five plays there on that drive. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. Joey Sly, Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. And no run back here for Moore. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25. Here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over. Now they're about to come up on drive number four, but so far just two field goals on drives one through three. Wondering if the head coach has talked with his offense coordinator and said, look, let's, let's go ahead and press this a little bit. I'm giving you four downs on just about every occasion. 
to try and get this offense kick-started and have it culminate in touchdowns. You know, maybe someday they press it a little bit. This might be the case. They start the drive with Connor. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine for the 26. Looking to throw. McCoy. He'll get that one complete to Connor. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. A gain of 10 first down, Arizona. But it certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. They run behind center with Connor, and he'll take this ahead for about four, second down coming up. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown, so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. From the 40 now on second down, McCoy. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. A couple of first downs on the drive already, as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Operating from the gun, McCoy. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now for getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. Now a second and ten. This is Connor running right. And now off to the races, down the right side. He'll get this one down near the 20 yard line, just shy of the 20. That flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. Operating from the gun, McCoy. Throw out wide is incomplete. And that's the knowledge you gained from being in this league for a long time. He's learned the hard way when to give up and fight another down. And that's a smart move to throw it around. And this offense on third down today, they've only converted once in four tries. This is third and ten. Off play action. McCoy. Flush to his right, and to the 49-yard line, but no further, and obviously he is well short of the first. He opted to go with a scramble, gets two yards, and now it's fourth. Nice call on defense, rolling out the nickel package for that big third down play, and he did an excellent job locking down coverage and forcing him to try and run for it, and he doesn't get there, which brings up a big fourth down call. Here comes the Cardinals punter now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. Antonio Gibson and the Washington offense ready to go here once more. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. And he doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. Howell and the Commanders come up now first and 10 at their own 12-yard line. They'll then start this drive in the air. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an out of boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. He was trying to get it to Terry McLaurin. And now it's second down. Shotgun handoff to Gibson. 
And he'll get this one up to about his 14. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. Now a third down throw, and it misses the target incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. Tress Way on fourth down is sent out to punt. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. We'll call it a 42-yard punt, three on the return. And it will be first and ten as they take over. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. On first and 10, McCoy. On the check down, it's Ingram. So the completion good for just three. And it'll be second down. That's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. From the 45 on second down, McCoy. All the commanders are going to get there as he's taken down. That's Deron Payne with a sack that time. Another example there of why offensive guards have to really prepare themselves to try and play against Deron Payne. 11 and a half sacks in 2022. He picks up another one there for D.C. Off the play fake, McCoy. He's going to look deep for more. And it's knocked away and incomplete. That's a really good job in execution. They avoided the flag downfield and avoided giving up yardage for free. Really good coverage. Here comes the Cardinals punter now as he's on here to punt it away. It'll be a 39-yard punt, four on the return. And it will be Washington football now with a first and 10. Washington's offense ready to go again. There's Antonio Gibson. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game through the air first. Maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. They will get four yards here on the first down run, and that'll make it second and six. from the gun. He'll dump that off to Gibson complete. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. Here comes third and about a foot. The commander's going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Here comes third in the length of the football. Hal trying to pick it up on third. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Now Washington going to go ahead and use their final timeout. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward.
Al throwing on first down here. To the sideline and incomplete. No sense risking anything there on first down. Even though he's still in the pocket, he had a receiver out to his side, so he'll just put that in a spot where the only people to make a play on it are the trainers and the coaches. Well done. Here's second and ten. Another throw for Howell. And that is incomplete, stopping the clock with five seconds to go. Well, he left no doubt about that one because even though he hasn't left the pocket, he's got a receiver in the area, so it's not grounding, even though there is no way that ball was going to be caught. And they line up now for what will likely be the last play of the first half. One last shot before the break. Howell. That one downfield for Dodson. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. So a very tight first half. We had to break in a one-point game. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everyone, to our brand-new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. It'll be the Cardinals who get the ball first. They trail here as we resume action in the third quarter. On the return, Rondale Moore will bring it out. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. The Cardinals ready to go here to start the third quarter. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some top. And that's caught inside the 35. Touchdown, Cardinals. Keith Brown, 79 yards. And the Cardinals have retaken a third quarter lead. Well, they had their chances in the first half, you remember, but had to settle for two field goals. This time they come away with six. I think they actually got affirmation about what they were doing by getting a touchdown because the field goals means they got in range but couldn't quite finish it off. This time, they broke through, and that's great for the old confidence. And on the sideline, difference of a feeling between three and six, is it astronomical or it, no? It, it, it can be at times, that's for sure. A lot of times, the field goal feels like a disappointment. The touch. And it's intercepted at the goal line. It's celebrating, and off he goes. Well, as most teams do in their two-point attempt, they pass the ball. Instead, it gets intercepted, and remember, if you pick it off, you got a chance to take it all the way back and get two points yourself, right? Yeah, not the case there, but that's why you got to be really careful with those throws, especially to the outside. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. First possession of the second half now for Washington. 
And Charles, it feels like we're set up for a good second half here. Came out of the locker room, one score game. Now the lead has already changed hands. Well, this offense, they've got an opportunity right now to take that lead right back. Yeah, and it feels like you're going back and forth almost a little bit like a tennis match, right? And we're just, you know, our heads just keep moving. Which side has it? Which side's going to score? How are they going to go out doing it? A little bit of a challenge for each side trying to match each other. On first and 10, it's Gibson. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 59 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. Gibson with the solid pickup there, and the commanders love using his ability in a variety of roles. Led the team with almost 1,400 all-purpose yards in 2022. He can run it and catch it out of the backfield. First down, Hal to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. Second and ten. Hal, another throw on second down. Looking for Dotson. He's got him. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals 42. A good pick up there, 22. It's pretty evident that this passing game has been frustrated so far. They haven't really moved the ball the way we might have expected. But this is a good pick up here for the first down. So into Cardinal territory now. It's first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Straight ahead, Gibson. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. From the 39-yard line, here comes second down at six. They'll go again with Gibson. And he'll take this one down to the 36. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Third and three. Here's Hal. And to find the open man. That's complete. And he's going to have a commander's first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moved. And yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. And that is caught. Touchdown, Washington. Curtis Samuel. And the Commanders have taken the lead here this third quarter. So a very strong first drive in the second half, Charles, as they turn that halftime deficit into a third quarter lead. And they were pretty purposeful there, weren't they? Measured in their approach. But boy, they executed awfully well, moving the ball down the field. Hal throwing for it. They tried for the two-point conversion there, but unsuccessful. And in the third quarter here, they were trying to push that to a three-point game, but instead it will stay at one. And I'm a big proponent of not chasing points or going for two too early. But in this case, I understand why. You know, if you kick an extra point, you're just up two, yeah. right? So a field goal still puts the other team ahead. So you go for two here and protect the field goal lead. They didn't get it done, though. Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. Moore now on the return. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. The Cardinal offense takes back over. 
Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. They begin on the ground here with Connor. They'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Here's McCoy. A uh, short one here caught by McBride and tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. The pressure was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught and you don't give up much right after the catch. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Now McCoy. And he is caught. And he's going to have a Cardinals first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Throwing on first down. McCoy. He'll get this complete to Rondale Moore. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 12 yards to pick up. Good enough for an Arizona first. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. In Washington territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 47. They'll look to throw again. This is Ertz on the pitch and catch. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. So from the 37, here's second and a yard. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Middle of the field, he finds Pascal. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at Washington's 27-yard line. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. From the gun, again to counter. And he's able to motor his way down to the 16-yard line. 11 more on that one, and another first down. First downs have not come easy, and neither have runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. They stay on the ground. Here's Connor again. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. James Conner, a 16-yard touchdown run. And the Cardinals have regained the lead. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big at the end of the season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive.
after the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. And the Washington offense going back to work. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. And because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. So the completion results there in nine yards. And it'll bring up a second and short. And Howe will throw it. Throw right side complete to Dotson. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gets him a first down. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. On the counter, Gibson. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Offense looked a little bit discouraged after that play, shaking their heads a bit, looking at each other. I think they thought they'd get a lot more out of that call. Sometimes you do get the running lane you want. And other times, the defensive front, they just break up the play before it can get going. Here's Hal to throw on second down. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. And he's certainly not a guy that drops that football very often. Indeed, because that's a bit of a surprise. I know he's in the middle of some traffic and people, bodies all around him, but he usually has the focus to haul that one in. Hal throwing on third down here. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. Now he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. So into Cardinal territory now. It's first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Back to the ground with Gibson to the 36-yard line. Stop there. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out. And they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Ball on the 36 now. Here's a second and seven. Now how? And his throw is incomplete. Oh, man, for him to be that wide open and drop it. Sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. From the gun on third down, how? He's got his target. That's complete. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals' 22-yard line. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh shot of downs. Well, this is an awfully tough route to defend in man coverage because he lines up on the right and runs a crossing route back to the other side of the field. So as a defender, you're not only trailing him the whole way, you're also looking out for your own guys to make sure you don't get yourself picked off. And then you can't catch up in time to prevent the completion. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL, and he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time, so make sure you get in shape. And that will be caught, but out of the end zone, says the field judge. It's ruled incomplete. 
zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, it was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. They come up to the line now, facing a third and ten after the incompletion. Throwing here, Howell. Completes it to Samuel. And all the way down inside the five and a four. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A field goal helps, but a touchdown gets you the lead. That had to be the message transmitted in the huddle. And they delivered there as that throw is going to keep the drive alive. And even better than that, set them up with a first and goal. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. They'll run with Gibson. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. They tried to run it to the short side of the field. There just wasn't a whole lot of room to work with. Yeah, it seems like things just kept getting strung out towards the sideline, and he kept looking for a spot to dive up into the gap. There just wasn't one, so that turned into nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. And no gain. Powell completing the quick throw out wide. Touchdown! Curtis Samuel with now his second touchdown of this third quarter. And the Commanders have answered back with a third quarter touchdown of their own to retake the lead. Had the option there, read it perfectly, and an easy little touchdown toss. And it has to be a sharp throw, too, because of where they are on the field, the extra traffic, things are condensed near the goal line. Good route by the receiver as well. They'll look to throw, and he's got it. The try for two is successful, and it pushes the lead up to a field goal. So both offenses come to life here in this third quarter as this is shaping up for a good finish. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. set to boot it. And Moore, he's going to sit on this one, and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. Here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown. Their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day. One score game. First and ten here. Throwing to start the drive. McCoy. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven. Past the 30 to the 32. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, Using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. There's the stiff arm. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 66 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. We'll definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. From Commander's territory now, it's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Again, a run with Connor. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Another carry for their leader, and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch victory. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. He's got him in, complete. Touchdown, Cardinal. 
Davis. Rondale Moore, 34 yards. And the Cardinals answer back with a touchdown of their own to take a fourth quarter lead. A plenty of scoring here of late, and our lead changes hands now in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they just gave up a touchdown the other end, so they knew that with time getting short, they had to put something together here, and they were able to do so and retake the lead right back. Prater for the extra point, and that will make this a four-point game. The drive summary, four plays, 75 yards. And the Cardinals cap it with a touchdown. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. This taken in at the goal line. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. Now look at Washington as they come onto the field. We certainly have a good one on our hands. They're trailing after that last touchdown, but now a chance for this offense to try to snag that lead right back here in the fourth quarter. First and 10 here for Hal and the Commanders at their own 18. Here's Gibson to start the drive. And he was able to shed one tackle but could not get away from there. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. That's a really good game right there. They pick up five yards halfway to a first down. The only problem now in the huddle everyone's going to want to touch the football be a lot of chattering now because they've seen that they can move the line of scrimmage Al now to throw it that's out to the flat for gibson and he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds This offense so far on third down, they're hitting at 60%, six out of 10 thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. Throwing there, but this pass is gonna wind up incomplete. The frustration evident there because he couldn't find anyone on third down and he left no doubt that he was throwing that one away. Here's Tressway now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Fair catch signal for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return, and they will take over first and 10. So first and 10 now from the 30. Throwing to start the drive. McCoy, that's into the hands of Pascal. And he'll have a gain of three to the 33. It's a pickup of three. Brings up second and seven at the 33 yard line. From the 33, here's second down at seven. Back to throw, McCoy. He's got Brown on the out route complete. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. He's now just three yards shy of 197 yards receiving on the contest and a first down. Looking to throw, McCoy, quick slant to Brown. Calling a gain of six on the play, and that's gonna bring up second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant, a lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. 
And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. 86 yards rushing now for Connor and a first down. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. A three-yard pickup brings up second and seven at the commander's 43-yard line. Second and seven. Operating from the gun, McCoy. Oh, and that is incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just not able to connect, so the play results in no gain. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. Back to throw. Oh, no, he lost the football. We can hear it all the way up here. Those guys down on the field alerting everyone to the fumble. He's lucky that his offensive mates picked him up and jumped on him. Yeah, and you have to think to yourself, and I'm sure they've been echoing it on the sideline and into the huddle. Guys, we have the lead. Just take care of the football. Don't make it easier for them to start to make a comeback. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. And Washington going to come back out here to take over offensively. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth quarter lead. Howell and the commanders come up now first and 10 at their own 23. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he is going to lose yardage here. Award that tackle for loss to the safety, Buda Baker. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Back to throw. Howell. Over the middle, brought in by Dotson. So they'll get eight out of that completion. And now we've got a third and four. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Powell. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's going to have a commander's first down as he'll be marked out a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Pal to the air on first and ten. Middle of the field, he's got McLaurin. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. From the 43, here's second and two. A give, running right, Gibson. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Four yards, the pick up, first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. A couple of first downs on the drive already. As they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Here's Hal. That quick throw there is incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Powell, another throw on second down. 
Looking for McLaurin, and he's got him. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Well, this defense needing a stop here. Got to have it. Third and nine. Al, he'll look to throw it. The cards get to him here. He's brought down for a sack. Rashard Lawrence drops him for a loss of 10, and it's going to be fourth and long. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Commander's football as we get back to it. Here we go. This is fourth down. Fourth down, Hal, desperation time. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. Then the Cardinals will now take over with excellent field position. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. we got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and ten. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now the commander is going to burn the second of their timeouts. Now leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. An extra man in the secondary for Washington on third down. They'll stay on the ground with Connor again. And now Washington going to go ahead and use their final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So here comes a veteran, Matt Kreider, in a big spot in this ballgame. This will get the lead up to seven. And this is good from 57 yards out. That was bombs away right there. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. But from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. Prater now will send it away following the made field goal. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. So here we go now with Hal and the Commanders. Down 28-21, a minute 40 remaining. They need a touchdown to the PAT to tie it as they come up first and 10. Here's Howell. And his throw here is incomplete. There have been quite a few plays they might look back on and say, we really have hurt ourselves, and that was another example. And this is late game execution. Everything on the line, so it all has to come together properly. The throw is made. Where's the catch? Got to catch in that spot. Howell to throw. It's going to be too high, out of bounds and incomplete. 
some back-to-back -back incompletions, now third and ten. And first things first, before you think about marching the ball down the field, you got to move the chains. You're exactly right. Got to get back into focus here. Get the first down. That's what's vital to them. And now a tough spot here. This is third and ten. Back to throw. Oh, what a heck of an effort there as he'll make the diving catch. And he's going to have a commander's first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Obviously a big first down right there. Yeah, they still got to hustle. They got to get to the line of scrimmage and get set. But I don't think necessarily you need to spike it. But they've got to continue to move quickly. Back to throw. And Dotson, he's got it. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. I don't know that those medium five-ish yard gains are going to do it right now. Probably should have dropped it, right? Yeah, that way you save more time on the clock. But I know receivers, they think they can catch it and break a tackle and turn it into a big game. Here comes second down. He'll look to throw. This one left side caught by Gibson. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. And remember, field goal does him no good in this situation. You got to think they should be taking some shots for the end zone soon. First down at the 48-yard line. Now this offense can now. No timeouts remaining as they come up here first down. Now he's flushed out left. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. Umpire through the flag usually always indicates holding, and that's what we've got. And you know, depending on their positioning, where you are on the field, the umpire's got different responsibilities, but always, always making sure no one's holding. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. One final shot now. I'm not even sure he can get it to the end zone, though, from this distance. That's going to take as much arm as he has, and you actually have to plan for the contingency. Maybe you're playing a tip. Try and get someone down who can tip it up and keep it for your own team and try and get to the end zone that way. Powell with one final shot. He's going to let it fly. And that one incomplete, but now a penalty flag coming in late. That might be P.I. So the game will continue for at least one more play. Could not finish a game on a defensive penalty. That's why they get one more untimed attempt. One final shot. They'll look to throw. And it's caught. It's a touchdown with zeros on the clock. And an extra point will send us to OT. Well, there's no doubt they just seized the momentum with that one. They can go ahead and kick the extra point here and ride that home wave on into overtime. Now for the all-critical extra point. And he's got it. No problems there. The extra point up and good, and we are headed to overtime. Four quarters not enough. We're all even, and to overtime we go. How much fun is this for everyone who's watching the game? How much fun is it for us to see this one get an extra period to get settled? So it's the Cardinals set to receive it. They'll look for a winning drive as we get this overtime period started. And we will not see a return to start overtime. It'll come out to the 25-yard line. And the Cardinals getting set to trot out there now. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now, the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, 
You don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it. And he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. Montez Sweat with a tackle. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Now a first throw here in overtime. This is Ertz in a pitch and catch. Even with that broken tackle, can't get very far. Stop short of the 30. That was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. What will they draw up to try to keep this opening drive of overtime moving? Third and seven. Here's McCoy. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. That gain of nine buys them a new set of downs. No surprise to see a sideline fired up by that big play. Heck, we're fired up, and we're supposed to be neutral. That's a quarterback putting his body on the line to fight and just barely get the first down. When he does something like that, it gets everyone ready to lay it all out there and try and match his intensity. Uh, here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. A few moving pieces on that play because that was an RPO, was it not? It was, but one important piece that didn't move incorrectly, the offensive line. Because when you're running this play, as he continued down the line of scrimmage, sometimes the lineman can wander downfield. And if you're more than a yard downfield, it's illegal to throw the football at that point. But they held their ground, held their spot, and turned it into a nice game. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that? Second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. The throw over the middle, taken in. They'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. That one goes for 30 yards. Well, as my dad would say sometimes, I'm just scratching my head here trying to figure out what was going on there defensively. How did you lose him in the middle of the field? If you're going to lose a receiver, Make sure it's someone on the short side of things, not deep downfield, that can hurt your defense. So the big play gets them all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and ten. Now McCoy. He'll dump this one off to Connor. Only able to gain a couple there, and that will bring up second down. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. From the 20, here's the second and eight. Back to throw again. Pass to the right, and he's got McBride. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. They'll give him four yards there. And just like that, it's third down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Oh, Brandon, that's a gamer move right there. Facing third down, steps up, calls his own number, and nearly makes the house call. If I'm the coach, I let him take another one right here, give him a chance to be the first one to hit the end zone after that effort he just gave him. Connor. His hand. Touchdown, Arizona. So the toss play effective, even down here near the goal line. Yeah, and you're hoping the defense commits too many men to stop the run in the middle of the field and that your blockers can gain a little bit of an advantage. And when they do, foot race to the pylon, and this time he had the speed to win that race. Yeah. 
Extra point good by Prater. And they will take a seven-point lead. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. The commander's offense set to take over. So remember, Charles, last time they were out here, they scored, but they just saw the opposition score, and they're trailing right now, so they're trying to keep pace here. They need a touchdown drive. Well, if you're a fan of offense, you're loving this, but if you're a fan of defense, this is tough to watch, and it's also tough to keep that up when you just watch your opponent march down the field on a scoring drive that lasts into double-digit snaps. You need a score here not just to follow the momentum from your last drive, but put the onus back on your opponent. And that's what they're doing right now, swapping that onus back and forth. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Al now to throw it. And Thomas has it. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. So he hooked up with a veteran there. And in overtime, that's not a bad idea. Go with the age and the experience. Yeah, because sometimes the young guys, they give you the fresh legs and give you all that bounce. But in this type of a situation, sometimes those legs slow down a little bit as the enormity of the moment overwhelms them. The veteran guys, they tend to come through. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. So he'll be stopped here for no gain. And it's second down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Here's Hal to throw on second down. And that is incomplete here. the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here, third and 10. Powell throwing on third down here. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. Going for it on fourth. Here's Hal. Short throw here to the tight end Bates. And he's not able to get away. He is stopped well, well short of a first down. So they've gone for it twice now on fourth down in this game, and both times unsuccessful. I wish we could hear the headsets now between the head coach and the offensive coordinator. Now that they're 0 for 2, if they get into a third situation, head coach might say, hey, you got anything for this one? <laughs> might get radio silence back. <laughs> so it's a win here for the Cardinals. And it was thanks in large part to the play of the man who's been doing this for a while, their veteran quarterback. Yeah, some of these DBs are going to be tossing and turning tonight, partner. He really had their number. Wound up with well over 300 yards passing and two touchdowns.